Section 2 of The Douay Reims New Testament. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 2. Matthew chapter 11. John sends his disciples to Christ, who upbraids the Jews for their incredulity, and calls to him such as are sensible of their burdens. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he passed from thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, sending two of his disciples, he said to him, Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? And Jesus, making answer, said to them, Go and relate to John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead rise again, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he that shall not be scandalized in me. Footnote. Scandalized in me, that is, who shall not take occasion of scandal or offense from my humility and the disgraceful death of the cross which I shall endure. End of footnote. And when they went their way, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What went you out into the desert to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Behold, they that are clothed in soft garments are in the houses of kings. But what went you out to see? A prophet? Yea, I tell you, and more than a prophet for this is he of whom it is written behold i send my angel before my face who shall prepare thy way for thee and men i say to you there hath not risen among them that are born of women a greater than john the baptist yet he that is the lesser in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent bear it away. Footnote. Suffereth violence, etc. It is not to be obtained, but by main force, by using violence upon ourselves, by mortification and penance, and resisting our perverse inclinations. End of footnote. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, he is Elias that is to come. Footnote. He is Elias, etc. Not in person, but in spirit. St. Luke chapter 1 verse 17. And a footnote. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I esteem this generation to be like? It is like to children sitting in the marketplace, who crying to their companions say, We have piped to you, and you have not danced, we have lamented, and you have not mourned. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold a man that is a glutton and a wine-drinker, a friend of publicans and sinners, and wisdom is justified by her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein were done the most of his miracles, for that they had not done penance. Woe thee, Chorazain! Woe to thee, Bethsaida! For if in Tyre and Sidon had been wrought the miracles that have been wrought in you, they had long ago done penance in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capharnaum, shalt thou be exalted up to heaven? Thou shalt go down even unto hell. For if in Sodom had been wrought the miracles that have been wrought in thee, perhaps it had remained unto this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and the day of judgment than for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I confess to thee, O Father, 
Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them to little ones. Yea, Father, for so hath it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me by my Father, and no one knoweth the Son but the Father, neither doth any one know the Father but the Son, and he to whom it shall please the Son to reveal him. Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. Take up my yoke upon you, and learn of me, because I am meek and humble of heart, and you shall find rest to your souls, for my yoke is sweet and my burden light. Matthew chapter 12 Christ reproves the blindness of the Pharisees and confutes their attributing his miracles to Satan. At that time Jesus went through the corn on the Sabbath, and his disciples, being hungry, began to pluck the ears and to eat. And the Pharisees, seeing them, said to him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, and they that were with him? how he entered into the house of God, and did eat the loaves of proposition, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for them that were with him, but for the priests only. Footnote, the loaves of proposition. So were called the twelve loaves, which were placed before the sanctuary in the temple of God. End of footnote. Or have ye not read in the law that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple break the Sabbath, and are without blame. But I tell you that there is here a greater than the temple. And if you knew what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would never have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And when he had passed from thence, he came into their synagogues, and behold, there was a man who had a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? But he said to them, What man shall there be among you that hath one sheep? And if the same fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will not take hold on it and lift it up? How much better is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do a good deed on the Sabbath days. Then he saith to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored to health, even as the other. And the Pharisees going out made a consultation against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus, knowing it, retired from thence, and many followed him, and he healed them all. And he charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul hath been well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not contend, nor cry out, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. The bruised reed he shall not break, and smoking flax he shall not extinguish, till he send forth judgment unto victory, and in his name the Gentiles shall hope. Then was offered to him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, so that he spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed, and said, Is not this the son of David? But the Pharisees, hearing it, said, This man casteth not out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall be made desolate, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. 
But if I by the Spirit of God cast out devils, then is the kingdom of God come upon you. Or how can any one enter into the house of the strong and rifle his goods, unless he first bind the strong, and then he will rifle his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Therefore I say to you, Every sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven men, but the blasphemy of the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Footnote. The blasphemy of the Spirit. The sin here spoken of is that blasphemy by which the Pharisees attributed the miracles of Christ wrought by the Spirit of God to Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Now this kind of sin is usually accompanied with so much obstinacy and such willful opposing the Spirit of God, and the known truth that men who are guilty of it are seldom or never converted, and therefore are never forgiven, because they will not repent. Otherwise there is no sin which God cannot or will not forgive to such as sincerely repent, and have recourse to the keys of the church. End of footnote. And whoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But he that shall speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world nor in the world to come. Footnote. Nor in the world to come. From these words, St. Augustine, De Civitas Dei, Liber 21, Line 13, and St. Gregory, a Dialogues forth chapter line thirty nine gather that some sins may be remitted in the world to come and consequently that there is a purgatory or a middle place and a footnote either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree evil and its fruit evil for by the fruit the tree is known o generation of vipers how can you speak good things whereas you are evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of a good treasure bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of an evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall render an account for it in the day of judgment. Footnote. Every idle word. This shows there must be a place of temporal punishment hereafter, where these slighter faults shall be punished. And a footnote. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Footnote, a sign, that is a miracle from heaven. St. Luke chapter 11 verse 16. And a footnote. Who answering said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh a sign, and a sign shall not be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was in the whale's belly three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights footnote three days etc not complete days and nights but part of three days and three nights taken according to the way that the hebrews counted their days and nights that is from evening to evening and a footnote the men of nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they did penance at the preaching of jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas here. The queen of the south shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon here. And when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and coming he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. 
Then he goeth, and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is made worse than the first. So shall it be also to this wicked generation. And as he was yet speaking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, seeking to speak to him. And one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without seeking thee. But he answering him that told him, said, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? Footnote, who is my mother? This was not spoken by way of slighting his mother, but to show that we are never to suffer ourselves to be taken from the service of God by any inordinate affection to our earthly parents and that which our Lord chiefly regarded in his mother was her doing the will of his Father in heaven. It may also further allude to the reprobation of the Jews, his carnal kindred, and the election of the Gentiles. And And stretching forth his hand toward his disciples, he said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father that is in heaven He is my brother and sister and mother. Matthew chapter 13 The parables of the sower and the cockle of the mustard seed, etc. The same day Jesus, going out of the house, sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went up into a boat and sat, and all the multitudes stood on the shore. And he spoke, to them many things in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow, and whilst he soweth some fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and ate them up, and other some fell upon stony ground, where they had not much earth, and they sprang up immediately, because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up they were scorched, and because They had not root, they withered away. And others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And others fell upon good ground, and they brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples came and said to him, Why speakest thou to them in parables? Who answered and said to them, because to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and he shall abound. But he that hath not, from him shall be taken away that also which he hath. Therefore do I speak to them in parables, because seeing they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled in them who saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For the heart of this people is grown gross, and with their ears they have been dull of hearing, and their eyes they have shut, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For amen I say to you, many prophets and just men have desired to see the things that you see, and have not seen them, and to hear the things that you hear, and have not heard them. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, there cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he that received the seed by the wayside. And he that received the seed upon stony ground is he that heareth the word, and immediately receiveth it with joy. Yet hath he not root in himself, but is only for a time. And when there ariseth tribulation and persecution because of the word, he is presently scandalized. 
and he that received the seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choketh up the word and he becometh fruitless but he that receiveth the seed upon good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth and beareth fruit and yieldeth the one a hundredfold and another sixty and another thirty another parable he proposed to them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that sowed good seed in his field but while men were asleep his enemy came and oversowed cockle among the wheat and went his way and when the blade was sprung up and had brought forth fruit there appeared also the cockle and the servants of the good man of the house coming said to him sir didst thou not sow good seed in thy field whence then hath this cockle and he said to them an enemy hath done this and the servants said to him wilt thou that we go and gather it up and he said no lest perhaps gathering up the cockle you root up the wheat also together with it suffer both to grow until the harvest and in the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers gather up first the cockle and bind it into bundles to burn but the wheat gather ye into my barn another parable he proposed unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which is the least indeed of all seeds but when it is grown up it is greater than all herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and dwell in the branches thereof another parable he spoke to them the kingdom of heaven is like to leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened all these things jesus spoke in parables to the multitudes and without parables he did not speak to them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying i will open my mouth in parables i will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world then having sent away the multitudes he came into the house and his disciples came to him saying expound to us the parable of the cockle of the field who made answer and said to them he that soweth the good seed is the son of man the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom and the cockle are the children of the wicked one and the enemy that sowed them is the devil but the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels even as cockle therefore is gathered up and burned with fire so shall it be at the end of the world the son of man shall send his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all scandals and them that work iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth then shall the just shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father he that hath ears to hear let him hear the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hidden in a field which a man having found hid it and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field again the kingdom of heaven is like to a merchant seeking good pearls who when he has found one pearl of great price went his way and sold all that he had and bought it again the kingdom of heaven is like to a net cast into the sea and gathering together of all kinds of fishes which when it was filled they drew out and sitting by the shore they chose out the good into vessels but the bad they cast forth so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall go out and shall separate the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth have ye understood all these things they said to him yes he said unto them therefore every scribe instructed in the kingdom of heaven 
is like to a man that is a householder who bringeth forth out of his treasure new things and old. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished these parables, he passed from thence, and coming into his own country, he taught them in their synagogues, so that they wondered and said, How came this man by this wisdom and miracles? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary, and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Jude? Footnote, his brethren. These were the children of Mary, the wife of Cleophas, sister to our blessed lady. St. Matthew, chapter 27, verse 56, St. John, chapter 19, verse 25. And therefore, according to the usual style of the scripture, they are called brethren, that is, near relations to our Savior, and a footnote. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence, therefore, hath he all these things? And they were scandalized in this regard, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he wrought not many miracles there, because of their unbelief. Matthew chapter 14 Herod puts John to death. Christ feeds five thousand in the desert. He walks upon the sea and heals all the diseased with a touch of his garment. At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard the fame of Jesus. Footnote. Tetrarch. This word, derived from the Greek, signifies one that rules over the fourth part of a kingdom, as Herod then ruled over Galilee, which was but the fourth part of the kingdom of his father. End of footnote. And he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works show forth themselves in him. For Herod had apprehended John, and bound him, and put him into prison because of Herodias, his brother's wife. For John said to him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And having a mind to put him to death, he feared the people, because they esteemed him as a prophet. But on Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced before them, and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask of him. But she being instructed before by her mother, said, Give me here in a dish the head of John the Baptist. And the king was struck sad, yet because of his oath, and for them that sat with him at table, he commanded it to be given. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a dish, and it was given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it, and came and told Jesus. Which when Jesus had heard, he retired from thence by a boat into a desert place apart. And the multitudes, having heard of it, followed him on foot out of the cities. And he coming forth saw a great multitude, and had compassion on them, and healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the hour is now past. Send away the multitudes, that going into the towns they may buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said to them, They have no need to go. Give you them to eat. They answered him, We have not here but five loaves and two fishes, who said to them, Bring them hither to me. And when he had commanded the multitude to sit down upon the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitudes. And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up what remained, twelve full baskets of fragments, and the number of them that did eat was five thousand men besides women and children, and forthwith Jesus obliged his disciples to go up into the boat 
and to go before him over the water till he dismissed the people. And having dismissed the multitude, he went into a mountain alone to pray, and when it was evening he was there alone. But the boat in the midst of the sea was tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking upon the sea. And they, seeing him walking upon the sea, were troubled, saying, It is an apparition, and they cried out for fear. And immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good heart, it is I, fear ye not. And Peter, making answer, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee upon the waters. And he said, Come. And Peter, going out of the boat, walked upon the water to come to Jesus. But seeing the wind strong, he was afraid. And when he began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus, stretching forth his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, O thou of little faith, why didst thou doubt? And when they were come up into the boat, the wind ceased. And they that were in the boat came and adored him, saying, Indeed, thou art the Son of God. And having passed the water, they came into the country of Genesar. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent into all the country and brought to him all that were diseased. And they besought him that they might touch but the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made whole. Matthew chapter 15 Christ reproves the scribes, he cures the daughter of the woman of Canaan, and many others, and feeds four thousand with seven loaves. Then came to him from Jerusalem scribes and Pharisees, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the ancients? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answering said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God for your tradition? For God said, Honor thy father and mother, and he that shall curse father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whoever shall say to father or mother, The gift whatsoever proceedeth from me shall profit thee. Footnote, the gift, etc. That is, the offering that I shall make to God shall be instead of that which should be expended for thy profit. This tradition of the Pharisees was calculated to enrich themselves by exempting children from giving any further assistance to their parents if they once offered to the temple and the priests that which should have been the support of their parents. But this was a violation of the law of God and of nature which our Saviour here condemns. And, a footnote. and he shall not honour his father or his mother, and you have made void the commandment of God for your tradition. Hypocrites, well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, saying, This people honoureth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching doctrines and commandments of men. Footnote, commandments of men. The doctrines and commandments here reprehended are such as are either contrary to the law of God, as that of neglecting parents under the pretense of giving to God, or at least are frivolous, unprofitable, and no ways conducing to true piety, as that of often washing hands, etc., without regard to the purity of the heart. But as to the rules and ordinances of the Holy Church, touching fasts, festivals, etc., these are no ways repugnant to, but highly agreeable to God's holy word and all Christian piety, neither are they to be counted among the doctrines and commandments of men, because they proceed not from mere human authority, but from that which Christ has given to his church, whose pastors he has commanded us to hear and obey, even as himself. St. Luke chapter 10, verse 16, St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 17. End of footnote. And having called together the multitudes unto him, he said to them, Hear ye, and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but what 
cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Footnote. Not that which goeth into, etc. No uncleanness in meat, nor any dirt contracted by eating it with unwashed hands can defile the soul, but sin alone, or a disobedience of the heart to the ordinance and will of God. And thus, when Adam took the forbidden fruit, it was not the apple which entered into the mouth, but the disobedience to the law of God which defiled him. The same is to be said if a Jew, in the time of the old law, had eaten swine's flesh, or a Christian convert in the days of the apostles, contrary to their ordinance, had eaten blood, or if any of the faithful at present should transgress the ordinance of God's church by breaking the fasts, for in all these cases the soul would be defiled, not indeed by that which goeth into the mouth, but by the disobedience of the heart, in willfully transgressing the ordinance of God or of those who have their authority from him. End of footnote. Then came his disciples and said to him, Dost thou know that the Pharisees, when they heard this word, were scandalized? But he answered, saying, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they are blind and leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both fall into the pit. And Peter answering said to him, Expound to us this parable. But he said, Are you also yet without understanding? Do you not understand that whatsoever entereth into the mouth goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the privy? But the things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and those things defile a man. For from the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false testimonies, blasphemies. These are the things that defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands doth not defile a man. And Jesus went from thence and retired into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, who came out of those coasts, crying out, said to him, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously troubled by a devil. Who answered her not a word? And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And he answering said, I was not sent but to the sheep that are lost of the house of Israel. But she came and adored him, saying, Lord, help me. Who answering said, It is not good to take the bread of the children and cast it to the dogs. But she said, Yea, Lord, for the whelps also eat of the crumbs that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus answering said to her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it done to thee as thou wilt, and her daughter was cured from that hour. And when Jesus had passed away from thence, he came nigh the sea of Galilee, and going up into the mountain, he sat there. And there came to him great multitudes, having with them the dumb, the blind, the lame, the maimed, and many others, and they cast them down at his feet, and he healed them so that the multitudes marveled, seeing the dumb speak, the lame walk, the blind see, and they glorified the God of Israel. And Jesus called together his disciples and said, I have compassion on the multitudes, because they continue with me now three days, and have not what to eat, and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And the disciples said unto him, Whence then should we have so many loaves in the desert as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves have you? But they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down upon the ground. And taking the seven loaves and the fishes, and giving thanks, he brake and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave to the people. And they 
did all eat and had their fill, and they took up seven baskets full of what remained of the fragments. And they that did eat were four thousand men besides children and women. And having dismissed the multitude, he went up into a boat and came into the coasts of Magidon. Matthew chapter 16 Christ refuses to show the Pharisees a sign from heaven. Peter's confession is rewarded. He is rebuked for opposing Christ's passion. All his followers must deny themselves. And there came to him the Pharisees and Sadducees tempting. And they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, Today there will be a storm, for the sky is red and lowering. You know then how to discern the face of the sky, and can you not know the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and a sign shall not be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. And he left them and went away. And when his disciples were come over the water, they had forgotten to take bread who said to them, Take heed, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. But they thought within themselves, saying, Because we have taken no bread. And Jesus, knowing it, said, Why do you think within yourselves, O ye of little faith, for that you have no bread? Do you not yet understand, neither do you remember the five loaves among five thousand men, and how many baskets you took up? nor the seven loaves among four thousand men, and how many baskets you took up? Why do you not understand that it was not concerning bread, I said to you, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he said not that they should beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And Jesus came into the quarters of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man is? But they said, Some John the Baptist, and other some Elias, and others Jeremias, or one of the prophets. Jesus saith to them, But whom do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answering said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, because flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Footnote. Thou art Peter, etc. As St. Peter, by divine revelation, here made a solemn profession of his faith, of the divinity of Christ, so in recompense of this faith and profession, our Lord here declares to him the dignity to which he is pleased to raise him, that is, that he to whom he had already given the name of Peter, signifying a rock, St. John chapter 1 verse 42, should be a rock indeed of invincible strength for the support of the building of the church in which building he should be next Christ himself the chief foundation stone, in quality of chief pastor, ruler, and governor, and should have accordingly all fullness of ecclesiastical power signified by the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Upon this rock, etc., the words of Christ to Peter, spoken in the vulgar language of the Jews, which our Lord made use of, were the same as if he had said in English, Thou art a rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So that by the plain course of the words, Peter is here declared to be the rock upon which the church was to be built, Christ himself being both the principal foundation and the founder of the same. Where also note that Christ, by building his house, that is, his church upon a rock, has thereby secured it against all storms and floods, like the wise builder, St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 and 25, the gates of hell, etc., that is, the powers of darkness, and whatever Satan can do, 
either by himself or his agents. For as the church is here likened to a house or fortress built on the rock, so the adverse powers are likened to a contrary house or fortress, the gates of which, that is, the whole strength and all the efforts it can make, will never be able to prevail over the city or church of Christ. By this promise we are fully assured that neither idolatry, heresy, nor any pernicious error whatsoever shall at any time prevail over the church of Christ. End of footnote. And I will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind upon earth, it shall be bound also in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, it shall be loosed also in heaven. Footnote. Loose on earth. The loosing of bands of temporal punishment due to sins is called an indulgence, the power of which is here granted. End of footnote. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the ancients and scribes and chief priests and be put to death and the third day rise again. And Peter, taking him, began to rebuke him, saying, Lord, be it far from thee, this shall not come unto thee. Footnote. And Peter taking him, that is, taking him aside out of a tender love, respect, and zeal for his Lord and Master's honor, began to expostulate with him, as it were to rebuke him, saying, Lord, far be it from thee to suffer death. But the Lord said to Peter, verse 23, Go behind me, Satan. These words may signify, Be gone from me, but the Holy Fathers expound them otherwise, that is, come after me, or follow me. And by these words the Lord would have Peter to follow him in his suffering, and not to oppose the divine will by contradiction, for the word Satan means in Hebrew an adversary, or one that opposes. And a footnote. Who turning said to Peter, Go behind me, Satan. Thou art a scandal unto me, because thou savourest not the things that are of God, but the things that are of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For he that will save his life shall lose it, and he that shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what doth it profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? Or what exchange shall a man give for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then will he render to every man according to his works. Amen, I say to you, there are some of them that stand here that shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew chapter 17 The Transfiguration of Christ He cures the lunatic child, foretells his passion, and pays the didrachma. And after six days Jesus taketh unto him Peter and James and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his garments became white as snow. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elias talking with him. And Peter answering said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be the here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. And as he was yet speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and lo, a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And the disciples, hearing, fell upon their face, and were very much afraid. And Jesus came and touched them, and said to them, Arise, and fear not. And they, lifting up their eyes, saw no one but only Jesus. And as they came down from the mountain, 
Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, till the Son of Man be risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elias must come first? But he answering said to them, Elias indeed shall come and restore all things. But I say to you that Elias is already come, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they had a mind, so also the Son of Man shall suffer from them. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them of John the Baptist. And when he was come to the multitude, there came to him a man falling down on his knees before him, saying, Lord, have pity on my son, for he is a lunatic, and suffereth much, for he falleth often into the fire, and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the devil went out of him, and the child was cured from that hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus secretly, and said, Why could not we cast him out? Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for amen I say to you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove from hence hither, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible to you. Footnote. As a grain of mustard seed, that is, a perfect faith, which in its properties and its fruits resembles the grain of mustard seed in the parable chapter 13, verse 31. End of footnote. But this kind is not cast out, but by prayer and fasting. And when they abode together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. And they were troubled exceedingly. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received the didachma said to Peter, and said to him, Doth not your master pay the didachma? Footnote, the didachma. The didachma was a half a sickle, or half a stater, that is, about fifteen pence English, which was a tax laid upon every head for the service of the temple. He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What is thy opinion, Simon? The kings of the earth, of whom do they receive tribute or custom, of their own children or of strangers? And he said, Of strangers. Jesus said to him, Then the children are free but that we may not scandalize them, go to the sea and cast in a hook, and that fish which shall first come up, take, and when thou hast opened its mouth, thou shalt find a stater, take that and give it to them for me and thee. Matthew chapter 18 Christ teaches humility, to beware of scandals, and to flee the occasions of sin to denounce to the church incorrigible sinners, and to look upon such as refuse to hear the church as heathens. He promises to his disciples the power of binding and loosing, and that he will be in the midst of their assemblies, no forgiveness for them that will not forgive. At that hour the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who, thinkest thou, is the greater in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus, calling unto him a little child, set him in the midst of them, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, he is the greater in the kingdom of heaven. And he that shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But he that shall scandalize one of these little ones, that believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone should be hanged around his neck, and that he should be drowned in the depth of the sea. Footnote, shall scandalize, that is, shall put a stumbling block in their way, and 
cause them to fall into sin. End of footnote. Woe to the world because of scandals, for it must needs be that scandals come. But nevertheless woe to that man by whom the scandal cometh. Footnote it must needs be, etc., that is, considering the wickedness and corruption of the world, and a footnote. And if thy hand or thy foot scandalize thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to go into life maimed or lame than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire, footnote, scandalize thee, that is, cause thee to offend. And a footnote. And if thy eye scandalize thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. It is better for thee having one eye to enter into life than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. See that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. What think you? If a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them should go astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the mountains, and goeth to seek that which is gone astray? And if it so be that he find it, Amen, I say to you, he rejoiceth more for that than for the ninety-nine that went not astray. Even so it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. But if thy brother shall offend against thee, go and rebuke him between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou shalt gain thy brother. And if he will not hear thee, take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may stand. And if he will not hear them, tell the church. And if he will not hear the church, let him be to thee as the heathen and publican. Amen, I say to you, whatsoever you shall bind upon earth shall be bound also in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose upon earth shall be loosed also in heaven. And again I say to you, that if two of you shall consent upon earth concerning anything whatsoever they shall ask, it shall be done to them by my Father who is in heaven. For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Footnote. There am I in the midst of them. This is understood of such assemblies only as are gathered in the name and authority of Christ, and in the unity of the Church of Christ, St. Cyprian de Unitate Ecclesiae. End of footnote. Then came Peter unto him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother offend against me, and I forgive him, till seven times? Jesus saith to him, I say not to thee till seven times, but till seventy times seven times. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a king who would take an account of his servants. And when he had begun to take the account, one was brought to him that owed him ten thousand talents. Footnote. Talents. A talent was seven hundred and fifty ounces of silver, which at the rate of five shillings to the ounce is a hundred and eighty-seven pounds ten shillings sterling. End of footnote. And, as he had not wherewith to pay it, his lord commanded that he should be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. But that servant, falling down, besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the lord of that servant, being moved with pity, let him go, and forgave him the debt. But when that servant was gone out, he found one of his fellow servants that owed him an hundred pence, and laying hold of him he throttled him, saying, Pay what thou owest. Footnote, pence. The Roman penny was the eighth part of an ounce, that is, about seven pence, half penny English, and a footnote. And his fellow servant, falling down, besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he paid the debt. 
Now his fellow servants, seeing what was done, were very much grieved, and they came and told their lord all that was done. Then his lord called him and said to him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all the debt, because thou besoughtest me. Shouldst not thou then have had compassion also on thy fellow servant, even as I had compassion on thee? And his lord, being angry, delivered him to the torturers, until he paid all the debt. So also shall my heavenly Father do to you, if you forgive not every one his brother from your hearts. Matthew chapter 19 Christ declares matrimony to be indissoluble. He recommends the making one's self a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven and parting with all things for him. He shows the danger of riches and the reward of leaving all to follow him. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these words, he departed from Galilee and came into the coasts of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. And there came to him the Pharisees, tempting him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Who answering said to them, Have ye not read that he who made man from the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they two shall be in one flesh. Therefore now they are not two but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. They say to him, Why then did Moses command to give a bill of divorce, and to put away? He saith to them, Because Moses by reason of the hardness of your heart permitted you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you that whoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And he that shall marry her that is put away, committeth adultery. Footnote. Except it be, etc. In the case of fornication, that is, of adultery, the wife may be put away. But even then the husband cannot marry another as long as the wife is living. End of footnote. His disciples say unto him, If the case of a man with his wife be so, it is not expedient to marry. Who said to them, All men take not this word, but they to whom it is given. Footnote. All men take not this word, that is, all receive not the gift of living singly and chastely, unless they pray for the grace of God, to enable them to live so, and for some it may be necessary to that end to fast as well as pray, and to those it is given from above. End of footnote. For there are eunuchs who were born so from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made so by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven, he that can take, let him take it. Footnote. There are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. This text is not to be taken in the literal sense, but means that there are such who have taken a firm and commendable resolution of leading a single and chaste life in order to serve God in a more perfect state than those who marry as St. Paul clearly shows, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 37 and 38, and a footnote. Then were little children presented to him that he should impose hands upon them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said to them, Suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come to me, for the kingdom of heaven is for such. And when he had imposed hands upon them, he departed from thence. And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, 
What good shall I do that I may have life everlasting? Who said to him, Why asketh thou me concerning good? One is good, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which? And Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith to him, All these have I kept from my youth. What is yet wanting to me? Jesus saith to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when the young man had heard this word, he went away sad, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when they had heard this, the disciples wondered much, saying, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, beholding, said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answering said to him, Behold, we have left all things, and have followed thee. What therefore shall we have? And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the seat of his majesty, you also shall sit on twelve seats, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall possess life everlasting. And many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. End of section 2